Welcome back to Global Village. I'm your host, Buddy Konanan. So tonight's topic is all about Israel. And we've had the ambassador of Israel on the show. We've had two doctors here on the show. And now we're going to talk about the business side of Philippines-Israel relations. And joining me is none other than uh, Itamar Guerrero. And he is the president of the Israel Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. Itamar, welcome to Global Village. Thank you for having me. My well, pleasure. And, uh, you know, pop pack. This, this show is really packed because now business. And unfortunately, we only have a few minutes for this, but uh, so much to talk about in this realm, you know, because mm -hmm. and, and exciting stuff, exciting things happening yes. with your chamber. Now, um, let's have an introduction first. Uh, who is uh, Mr. Itamar Guerrero? Well, I'm, uh, I'm Israeli, first of all, and I've been in the Philippines for eight years. I came here to start my uh, IT company. I'm an entrepreneur and pro programmer myself. And I saw the, the potential in the Philippines eight years ago. Eight le years later, we have a company here with 150 employees. Uh, wow, yeah. okay. And uh, then I took uh, the lead of the chamber to help uh, more entrepreneurs come and invest in the Philippines and vice versa. Filipinos to see the value and the, the potential in Israel. Okay, what kind of IT company do you have? I mean, when you say IT, very broad. Uh, very broad, yeah. to narrow it down, we deal with the uh, software with the marketing, digital marketing, and we do outsourcing. So we outsource our, our services to the United States and Australia. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your success from thank, zero thank to 150. You. Thank you very much. And now you're president of the Israel Chamber of Commerce of the yeah. Philippines, and I'm sure you wouldn't have been put in this position if you were not in the prime, prime position to really help your country and help the Philippines in this uh, yeah, you know, so. connect. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the Israel Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. How old is it? Has it been around for a while? It's been over a decade now, and many great uh, uh, forefathers, if we can call them that, uh, helped the chamber grow and be what it is today, and help uh, um, bring more business uh, to the Philippines from Israel and vice versa. And now, after eight years in the Philippines, I, I think that now the time is right. Now um, more people are coming and more people are going, by the way. And the number speaks for itself because uh, there was a surge of 44% uh, in Israelis coming to the Philippines. It, uh, we were actually on top of the chart wow. when it came to uh, Israelis coming to the Philippines and the numbers on the, the other side is, are, are rising as well. That's plenty, uh, a 44% jump uh, yes, since yes. you guys uh, you know, started this initiative. No? It's, uh, th there's a big awareness, I think, that is becoming uh, in Israel uh, to the Philippines and vice versa. What have you guys been doing to, to you know, as you said, it, it starts with awareness, it right. interests, you got to spark it, it's like a flame, right. you got to start a flame and then what have you guys been doing to, to, to arouse this interest? We're very active, actually. We have our uh, events. We are trying to have at least uh, one event every couple of months where we take uh, Filipinos and we take Israelis and we get them to meet each other and to talk about different uh, business topics. Like this month, for example, we'll have a, a bi Doing Business in the Philippines event. It will be in the Tower Club uh, on the 27th of uh, April. And we're bringing speakers. And just I think that that uh, chance to network and to explore business opportunities is what's making the difference. Something that didn't happen as much in the past is happening more and more now. And it just uh, you know, uh, shows its effect. Yes. Um, what, what kind of synergies do you think are there between the Philippines and Israel? I mean, we're two countries separated by a very great distance. Right. Uh, uh, very different in many ways in, in terms of demographics. You know, mm -hmm. Israel is a small country, small population. Ours is a big country with a, with a big, big population. How do, what synergies can be created? That's, what do you think a, that's exactly the magic of it. <laughs> if we were being exactly the same country, doing the same things, that's manufacturing true. the same thing, you wouldn't have what to talk about. <laughs> true. And it's true. a very complementing um, uh, scenario here. Uh, Israel came from being a solution uh, consumer to a solution provider. You know, we do more with less, less land, but we do more with agriculture, uh, with dairy, with technology. And I think that the Philippines is uh, now uh, positioned to, to, to take advantage of these solutions, and it's happening. How did Israel become, I mean, example, you, are, you came here as an IT person, you set up the IT mm -hmm. company. I mean, unbeknownst to many people, Israel is actually a powerhouse of IT. I mean, uh, right. Viber is from Israel, Viber, right? Waze, which ICQ, everyone uses. ICQ, the first, it, with the first uh, yeah, yeah, all from Israel. Yeah, this is the stuff that we know about, but also behind the, the scenes or under the engine, under the hood, there's a lot of technologies, a lot of uh, uh, intellectual property that was developed in Israel in, in medical equipment, and there's a lot of it here in the Philippines as well medical equipment, uh, agriculture, agrotech, 
so Israel, yes, is known, and um, this, is the, this is the part where Israel can help uh, the Philippines grow. And it's amazing. You know, Israel is actually composed of people who come from vastly different backgrounds, mm -hmm. right? Because the state of Israel was formed when you know people came together after you know the, the, the horrors of the World past, and, and coming together in this piece of land and establishing the, the state of Israel. Yeah. So diverse backgrounds, you know, the diverse cultures coming together. What 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 what? What is the gel that makes you guys so good at what you do? It's uh, technology. Uh, I Look think at it's that. the push. It's the community. <laughs> it's the community and the, the, the fact that we needed uh, to come up with solutions. We were there was a melting pot, like you said. Yeah. All different backgrounds, even different languages. Absolutely. We needed to revive a language, and we needed to do it in a very short time. So you have to. You have to. It's a kind of a swim or die. It's really about human resource. Now, that's the, that the I think is the richness of the human capital is the, where the richness of yeah. uh, the, 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 the true riches of Israel lies. And, and, and daring to take a chance, you know, when you have nothing to lose, you go and you you, you, you go on a limb and you make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about companies. Uh, okay, let's talk about the community first here. What are Israelis involved in here? My, I mean, uh, what are the common businesses that they're everything doing? from BPO to tourism, um, even finance services. Um, Israelis are are very adventurous. Israelis travel and they see the potential exactly like me eight years ago and they say I want to be part of it, I want to do something. Um, and I think that we're seeing more and more uh, of those. So the community here is growing and now what we have here is nothing compared to what we had eight years ago. Okay. Uh, it's, it's just on the growth every year. Okay. When you first came eight years ago, what was it that attracted you to the Philippines? What was the first thing that said, hey, I'm going to make a life here, I'm going to build a, bi I'm going to build a business, I'm going to stay here for eight years? I wasn't, I wasn't even <laughs> planning. I wasn't you even weren't planning. planning. I, wasn't, okay. I, w I came to visit a friend that was working here in a BPO. And on my first week, I was uh, in Palawan diving. And then, yeah, weekend in Boracay. And then I saw the people that are very pleasant, very easy and fun to deal with. And I said, you know what, I want to make something here. Um, the BPO was uh, just starting to boom, so for me it was identifying the opportunity and doing something about it. A lot of people identify opportunities, but they don't do something about it. And I think this is, pertaining to your previous question, is something that uh, um, symbolizes Israel, yeah. Israelis. It's the entrepreneurship, the just going for it. Just being driven, I guess. Yeah, now. And just, just go for it. Yeah, as you said, you have nothing to lose. Yeah, but that really the story lose. of the country. Right, and and yeah. I think it's part of the culture that really yeah. very driven, very very uh, exactly. positive, right, very focused, uh, goal oriented. Yes, Th that's what your people. Yeah. That's what the Jewish people are all about. They say it's the Jewish mom <laughs> <laughs> that drives you. Oh well, that pushes uh, they're, you. They're, they're <laughs> probably true. There you go. Okay, uh, big businesses. Um, what, what, what Israeli corporates are in the Philippines are doing business here, trading, that kind of thing? We have, we have uh, many companies. Some of them are incorporated in Asia, actually. So they're not uh, per se Israelis in the Philippines, but they are originating, originating from Israel, mm. from cybersecurity, software, agriculture. We have companies like ECI that's been working in the Philippines for 20 years, responsible for some of the biggest projects when it comes to uh, telco in the Philippines. Yeah. And then, uh, as, you, as, you, as you mentioned, um, how about, uh, let's say, companies in the Philippines uh, doing business in Israel? Are you aware of any corporates who are looking that direction? Like the other well, way the, around? The low hanging fruit here is the tourism, which is something mm. that we're trying to always harp okay. on. All because right. uh, there's more people coming, there's more people going, and someone needs to be there to intercept them and to uh, host them and to uh, make them you know, enjoy. Uh, actually, a month ago, there was a big event with 500 travel agents sponsored by an Israeli travel company that's been doing business in the, in the Philippines for years. And just seeing the sheer amount of travel agents, it made us realize that this low-hanging fruit is really ripe for the picking. Uh, so that's one thing. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we Filipinos have a sentimental attachment to Israel mm -hmm. because we're, mm -hmm. most of us are Catholics and Christians. Right. And, uh, you know, it is the biblical land where it's a dream of every Catholic the Christian land. to make a pilgrimage to see all these holy sites. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't end there. Um, first of all, the first thing that uh, we need to mention is that Filipinos don't need visa to Israel. Uh, because of the nature of the relationships uh, between the Philippines and uh, Israel, um, you can just uh, pack your bag and fly to Israel nice. and you'll be welcomed <laughs> on arrival. So of course, the pilgrimage is one thing, but then like I came to the Philippines and realized that there is potential and I want to do something, it can work the other way. So we are trying to encourage Filipinos to look at Israel for pilgrimage, but for other things. There's a food, uh, very developed food scene, uh, uh, holiday uh, scene in Israel. You see that, that 
I mean, until today, until now, that really has been the traditional mindset of people when right. they say Israel. Okay, it's it's the uh, it's a pilgrimage mm -hmm. destination. But uh, I'm glad you guys are focusing on on other things to show that the, the country has actually so much more to offer a than just more. the you know the biblical aspect, which is which is good. It's a good yeah. start. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good start. vantage yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, but then and you've been there. You've seen it. It's yeah. a very vibrant. Absolutely. Um, um, and I understand that it's now much easier for Filipinos to fly to Israel, aside from the visa-free policy. Right. You know, w way back when, when I used to go, uh, it, it, it took a long, you know, the flight was very long, basically. But yeah. now, I, the, a, an Asian carrier flies from the Philippines to, to Israel. Yeah, through Hong Kong, it's Cathay Pacific, and they have very, very accommodating prices. Um, but there's more and more airlines, Turkish Airlines, and El Al, of course, the Israeli airline, Ethiopian Airlines, Korean Airlines, and even Singaporean Airlines has joined the, the Fiesta, because there is uh, an awareness of sure. going to Israel for more than just uh, pilgrimage. The numbers in Israel are, are on the rise as well for tourism. So. We really encourage the Filipinos to, to, to take advantage of that. Excellent. Um, okay, let's talk about your plans for the chamber uh, for right. this year and coming. I mean, you guys are very active. Yes. And bravo. I mean, I want to laud you for your for your success. Um, what are your plans moving forward? How do you go, how are you guys going to take this to the next level? And, and, and who are you guys going to work with to promote? It? So me, I'm coming from the IT background, from the internet background, and what was uh, being done traditionally by, you know, face-to-face, um, uh, -face, uh, we're trying to put it on a platform online, on our website, which is the iccp.ph. We're trying to put business opportunities there. So we think that if we expose more business opportunities between uh, Israel and the Philippines, more people will jump on the opportunity. So it starts with raising awareness by networking events, but also taking advantage of uh, the online sphere. Um, so this next, this Coming year 2017, we're going to put a lot of effort on uh, exposing more business opportunities between both countries. Yes, and as we know, I mean, online is the name of the game these days, yeah. right? I mean, uh, it connects people instantly, and that's where everyone is online, no? And Which is another media. thing that Israel is very good <laughs> at. It's the online. It's uh, the, those type of companies that are making smarter cities, that wait, are wait. connecting people. Uh, Facebook wasn't created by, by in Israel, no? no? It's but Jewish, <laughs> Jew, but not, not in Israel. Yes. Same difference, same difference. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> same mom. <laughs> same mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mar, a pleasure to have you on the show, and uh, I, I hope much. I was telling uh, the other guys on the show earlier that, you know, these topics, business and networking and IT, so much to talk about. Yes. Unfortunately, so little time as part of one big show, but I hope to have you again. We'll um, see each other and again. again. And let's promote your, your Israeli chamber uh, activities. Gladly. Uh, like, like any activities or corporate social responsibility projects, let us know. Gladly. Pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, sir. So guys, stick around because more of uh, Israel and back with Ambassador when we return.